Good morning, everyone. Please rise and stand and sing with me. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing, I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up and sets us free. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing, I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up and sets us free. Let's sing that much again. Ready? Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing, I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up and sets us free. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing, I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up and sets us free. Sets us free from all lack or limitation. Sets us free to realize who we can be. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. Spirit calls, so stand up and believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up and sets us free. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up and sets us free. You know, down here in the front, we have a little one who's dancing. I would love for you guys to dance with me. Ready? Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher. Love lifts us up and sets us free. Spirit calls, come up higher. Spirit calls, sing I believe. Spirit calls, come up higher, love lifts us up and sets us free. Thank you. Good morning, Unity of Columbia. <laughs> uh, it's lovely to be here with you today and I welcome you, however you've shown up, if you're here in person, welcome, welcome. And let's give a wave to the people online and thank them for joining us this morning. So it is great to be here with you today. Uh, just turn to the person next to you and say, it's great to be here with you today. It's great to be here with you today. Yes. Well, today is a special day. We have a guest from Unity Worldwide Ministries, and her name is Indira Huerta. Here she is. Give us a wave, Indira. <laughs> Indira is the Spirit Group's Program Coordinator at Worldwide Ministries, so she knows everything about the new and updated program that Worldwide Ministries is running. And she's going to be giving us a message this morning on connection and how we connect with each other. After today's service, we have a Q&A, and Indira is going to be leading that so she can answer any questions that you have. And this is really the time... When you need to think about spirit groups, we're going to be launching in early September. So thinking about, would you like to be part of a group? Would you like to host a group? And if you're a little bit iffy about the hosting, uh, Indira can tell you all about it today. So it, the Q&A is at 11.15 here in the sanctuary, and you'll have time to grab a really quick cuppa and something to eat, and if you can be back here at 11.15. This ministry is committed to healing, to transformation, and to empowerment. And that's why we gather here together on Sunday mornings. And so I'm going to invite you just to open yourself up to a great demonstration this morning. And you might say, well, what is that demonstration? It's you. So please stand and meet each other and say, you are the great demonstration. Sing with us. Love is here, it surrounds us. Love is here, it unites us. Show our hearts and extend our hands. Shine our lights and to take a stand. Love is here, it creates us. Love is here, it moves us. To give ourselves to the highest 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Heidi Stallman, and I will be your facilitator today. Welcome. It's so good to see all of you, and welcome those of you online. Um, we'd especially love to welcome any newcomers here today. We're so glad you're here. There's a welcome station out in our foyer, so if you'd like to stop by after the service and see what's going on in, at Unity and get signed up for our newsletter or look for ways to get involved, that's all out there at our welcome station. All right. We just have a few, a little bit of a snafu here, so I'm gonna turn around and read this off the, off the um, slide for you. Our reading today is alone we can do nothing, but together our minds fuse into something whose power is far beyond the power of its separate parts. The kingdom cannot be found alone, and you who are the kingdom cannot find yourself alone. And that is from The Course in Miracles. Now, please join me in affirming our vision core values. Our vision is we, we celebrate, celebrate a spiritually, spiritually awakened world. world. And our mission is we inspire, inspire the awakening and practice of divine love in every heart. In addition, we celebrate our core values, knowing we have come here to be spirit-centered and to express the values of love, peace, and and connection. And now it's time for our children to gather in the front of the service for our children's moment with Rick Hansen. Good morning, everyone. How's your summer going? You've been on any trips, been to the swimming pool, been outside, been outside, been outside? <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason why I say be outside, if you've heard me up front here before, I've talked about being outside and my love of nature. Um, the outdoors is my sacred space. Have you heard of a, a term like sacred space? It's kind of a place you like to go and think about things and meditate and just enjoy what's all around you. In fact, there's a term called, have you heard of the, wor the word mother nature before? Mother nature? Yeah. Well, I've got to read this definition. I looked up a couple definitions of what mother nature is. And it says, nature is personified as a woman considered as the source and guiding force of creation. So I think that's pretty neat, you know, to think about it that way. So whenever I get the chance to come here, I talk about the outdoors. I brought a box of things here. Um, they have different things, and I'm just going to hold up some because I... I've already warned a few people here. I'm going to sing a song at the end of this. So. <laughs> so what I have are things that I want you all to use, or whoever wants to use them. So when we sing, I want you to think of these instruments as something in the out of doors, OK? Who would like to hold this? This is kind of a funny thing. You just have to. So would you like to use that? Thank you. And what does this, I'm going to do this, and what does this remind you of? Rain. Yeah. So here, I'll. And here's some other noisemakers. Just whoever wants. Okay. Here's a funny one. Maybe I'll give this to you. You blow in it and pull it out and in, and it makes a weird sound. Who else wants an instrument? Anybody? This one. Okay. Where are these things in this? 
<laughs> you know, I don't know what's, it's just little plastic balls, but it sound, sounds like rain, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, no, no, you want to ring the, it's just a chime that you ring. So when I, I was ta thinking about several things in the outer doors that I like, um, and just when I see things, the other day I was watching birds up in the tree and I was watching how they were communicating everything. Then I happened to look down and I saw a roly poly. Have you ever heard of what a roly poly is? I you, roly -poly. You, and I sat and watched it for maybe 10 minutes and it took that long for it to go from here to here. I thought, they're in no hurry to go anywhere, but you know, and what are they thinking about? So that's kind of the attitude I think I take a lot when I'm outdoors. I just, I'm in no hurry. This is a place to be. So what I'm going to do now is sing the song. And what I'd like you to do, if you want to, if, if you want to ring those, maybe you'll drown my voice out. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but this, oh, good. So this is, this is a song, what I consider, about nature, outdoors, uh, and, and loving people. And whenever I hear it, I almost feel like I'm going to cry, especially with the person who sings it. And his name's Louis Armstrong. So you may already know which one I'm going to sing, and I apologize for that. But here goes. So if you want to Rattle your things and do it. Feel free to play your instrument. Very good. So here I go, and bear with me. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow so pretty in the sky and also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more that I don't know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. So with that said, I want today's affirmation is, Whenever you're outdoors, can you just look around and think to yourself, what a wonderful world. Okay, so let's bless the children. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ you are. Thank you all. for our announcements. Um, just a reminder that we have a question and answer here at today at 1115 in the sanctuary. So just enough time to pop out and get yourself something to drink or snack and then come on back in at 1115. Also, the next series of Unity classes begins in a few weeks. 
and we'll be studying Myrtle Fillmore's Healing Letters, which is a wonderful collection of letters she wrote that are full of wisdom and insight. So please register on the sign-up form in the foyer if you'd like to join those classes. And as usual, there will be a prayer team member available for one-on-one -on -one prayer after the service in the prayer chapel. Today's daily word is wonder. And our affirmation is, I view my life through the eyes of wonder. The message reads, I feel inspired watching a young child discovering new things eyes wide with awe and wonder. Even the smallest experiences, feeling the tickle of a butterfly on the skin or blowing the seeds of a dandelion are a marvel and a joy. I think of this when disappointing life experiences chip away at my sense of awe and appreciation. Today, I let go of disillusionment and I open my heart and my eyes to once again live in wonder. As I view life anew, I renew my belief in the goodness of life and of all people. I open myself to the unexpected treasures happening around me each day. Wonder is a precious gift, one I use to appreciate the marvels unfolding before me. And our Bible verse today is from Acts chapter 3, verse 10. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. And now let's join together in speaking our affirmation aloud. I view my life through eyes of wonder. And now repeat it to yourself silently. prepare our hearts and minds for a time of meditation by singing together. And as we gently close our eyes, <coughs> taking a nice deep breath in, releasing on the out breath, we say thank you for this beautiful day. We say thank you for the opportunity to sit together as one in this sacred place. We acknowledge the one presence and the one power. And we feel that presence and we feel the power. We acknowledge the energy and the presence of all those who've gone before us in this place. And we bless this service today. We bless all those who sit here with us together. And we ask that we be filled with spirit, filled with that spirit of living life. We take all these blessings into the silence.
and by the presence and the power of this practice, may we know we are blessed in our relationships, our finances, our families, and in our church community. We affirm that we are blessed and that we are the blessing. May we all live in peace and harmony. May we walk the path with light and love. And we say, I am one with the one, and I am grateful. And so it is. Amen. have those days when you have everything planned out, you know exactly what you're going to say, exactly what you're going to wear, exactly what you're going to do, when you get up in the morning and everything changes. And I'm having that morning, so, and I'm crying, so, and I'll explain why. 
Um, I woke up today with terrible allergies, which I learned um, from Amy, I believe it was, that uh, dust and mold all at the same time. That's fantastic. And <laughs> like, how do we have dust and wetness? I'm, I'm struggling. And so anyway, I decided today that if I couldn't feel like a work of art, I was going to look like a work of art. And so I wore my painting pants. And lo and behold, it matches perfectly your the, the backdrop that's underneath the screen. I'm like, I look like your wall. And, and that's OK. Um, and that's not, the, that's not the only synchronicity I've had today. I'm having so many synchronicities that I'm literally stopping and going, wow, look at you, God, showing off in my life right now. So some of those synchronicities is that late last night, I already had my talk planned for today. I just got this inspiration to talk a little bit about my mother, to introduce you to my mother. And um, lo and behold, they chose her most favorite song in the whole world to play and to sing today, Love Can Build a Bridge. And my mother will be gone 10 years this September. So I'm, I'm getting it together. Um, but that was her absolute favorite song. And I'm like, look at you, God, showing off, showing off in my life right now. And I wanted to share that with you. So um, good morning. <laughs> Greetings from the mothership. I am from UWM, Unity Worldwide Ministries. And my name is Indira Huerta. I am a new thought minister and a ministerial candidate for UWSI. And I work in UWSI. Since I've been there, I've held four positions. <laughs> been there for two years. And um, <laughs> just keep moving up. And when I became a ministerial candidate, I said, I cannot run this department anymore. Um, does that mean I'm losing my job here? And they said, no, no, no. We have a place that we want you to move to. And so part of that has to do with running spirit groups. And part of that has to do with building a whole new program, which we'll talk about another day. So today we're here to talk about spirit groups. And in particular, um, it's, we're talking about reigniting and reintroducing small group ministry to your community. But as I mentioned a little bit ago, I wanted to introduce you to my mother, who has left, the, she left this earth about 10 years ago. And the reason I'm introducing you to her is because, again, with those synchronicities, my mother taught me to build bridges. My mother taught me to put leaves in the table. Remember the tables that used to have the leaves that you had to pull the table apart? It was a whole family affair to pull the table apart, put the leaf in, get it together to make the table longer, to make a bigger table. We don't do that anymore. Um, and to make lifelong connections. So my mother um, had a friend when I was growing up. My mother had been married twice. She, uh, she actually, when, by the time she passed, she had been married three times. But she got married in the 60s. That was before me. She had my sister, who's 10 years older than me. Then she married my father in the 70s. They had me in 71. And both marriages, unfortunately, ended in divorce. And then I remember being about four years old and my Aunt Judy moving in. And Aunt Judy was not my mother's sister. She was an only child. And Aunt Judy brought with her her four kids. So suddenly it went from being me and my big sister, Michelle, to being me, my big sister, Michelle, Billy, Tuggy, Dougie, Charlie, Tammy, and Aunt Judy, and my mom. And, um, and so we just put a leaf on the table, and we made it bigger so everybody had a chair, had a place to sit. And I had known Aunt Judy my whole life. And suddenly, in, you know, in, at, suddenly we just all we had to move away. Aunt Judy and her kids went somewhere else. Mom, Michelle, and I went somewhere else. But they stayed in touch. They talked every week. Um, my sister would often call Aunt Judy, talk to her, talk to the kids. And I didn't think anything of it until suddenly, I'm like 10 or 11, and I discovered that Aunt Judy was my sister's stepmother. And I was like, how does that work, Mom? She, she married your first husband after you divorced him, and you invite her into our home, and you raise your children together for a year, and you're friends with her? I don't understand. And my mother said, but she's nice. And clearly, Bill had good taste. He chose both of us, you know? So why, why? Why wouldn't I be her friend? 
Why wouldn't we find, when we find ourselves in the same situation, both without husbands, both without, without a second income, why wouldn't we come together and build a whole family together? And I just remember thinking, that's weird, but kind of cool. And so as time went on, I got a little bit older, started having boyfriends in junior high and things like that. And I said to my mom, I said, you know, Kenton and I broke up. I said, but I really still want to be his friend. And my mom said, then be his friend. Yeah, but you're not supposed to be friends with somebody you broke up with. And she said, who made up that cockamamie rule? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And she said, if you love them and you realize it doesn't work out, you can still love them. You just reframe the relationship. You just look at it from a different perspective. You want, you always want what's good for them. And as long as he's not mean to you, why can't you still be his friend? And I said, well, how come you're not friends with my dad? And she's like, well, he wasn't nice to me. And she said, but look at Aunt Judy. Aunt Judy and I, you know, shared the same man, different, different time frames, but we can be friends. And she's like, and look at me. And she, you know, mentioned a couple of boyfriends that she had had. Look at me and Al, look at me. And we're still friends. We're still business partners. And I was like, wow. So you don't have to throw people away. You can actually just reframe the relationship and still be friends with the people that you're in relationships with. That's so interesting. She goes, if you loved them, love continues. Just reframe it. So when my mother was diagnosed with cancer, we had six days till, the, till she passed. It was a very quick turnaround. And so I was immersed in the grief, immersed in the planning of her services, and kind of made that announcement, unfortunately, on social media. That's how we do it now. And my inbox was flooded with people, all people that I went to high school with. And I was like, what is this about? And I began to read, people I haven't heard from in 20 years, start to read them. And what they were saying was, man, I remember this time when your mom did. Uh-oh, I'm coming untied. <laughs> Let me see if I can wrap it. She keeps wrapping it behind my earring. You know what? Can I have the handheld? We kind of, we have plenty of these, don't we? Got the handheld? Thank you. All right. So one of them said, you know, when I had, you know, boy problems, I could always show up at your house and your mom would sit me down at the table, give me a cold Pepsi, listen to me and tell me that my love was valid and that my hurt was valid. She goes, and I was 14 years old. How many adults say to you when you're 14, yes, you know how to love. You know how to love, and yes, it hurts when that love gets taken away and you're gonna be okay. And I was like, wow, my mom said that to you? Okay, when were you at my house? <laughs> and. And because my mom and I, I mean, you know, we lived in the same house, but we kind of lived separate lives. She raised me to be very independent. And so even in high school, I had a job. I was very active in high school. Apparently, my mom had this whole secret life where people would come to our house and they would get advice from my mother. They would come to my house and invite my mom to their events because their parents had stopped showing up. You know, by high school, parents get kind of get tired. So not only was my inbox filled, but the day of her funeral, I had 15 people show up from my high school that knew my mother and that wanted to pay their last respects because she built bridges and she extended her table for them. And that meant the world to me. I found out she had been going to choir concerts. She had been going watching girls cheer at football games and basketball games. She wasn't there for the game. She was there for the girls to, to cheer them on. She had been going, she had this whole other life that I did not learn about until she had passed. So that was quite an experience. So when UWM was in negotiation with Mindy, Mindy approached UWM asking us if we would take over spirit groups because she wanted it run professionally. 
And so when we were in negotiation with that, I began to meet with her to discover what this was about. What is a spirit group thing? Small group ministry. Sure, I have a degree in education. We just put people in small groups and we just talk about things. And Mindy's like, yeah, you're not getting it yet. It'll be okay. So it's a, it's a learning curve. It was a four-month learning curve when I realized that spirit groups has 1% to do with book clubs. 1%. It is about connection. It is about bringing people into our lives. I don't think any of us, Shad, myself, Kathy Christie, Diane Vanzera, I don't think we ever realized how powerful and profound this program is and how far-reaching its effects can be in helping people live deeper, more meaningful lives. So today's Daily Word talks about dandelion seeds, right? If you have ever seen the Spirit Group logo and you've heard our, um, our mission, Inspiring Infinite Connections, and it's dandelion seeds blowing in the breeze. Look at you, God, showing off, right? That synchronicity. So if it isn't about a book study, then what is Spirit Groups about? So I'm going to go a little sciency on you. The Center for Disease Control says that social connectedness is the degree to which people have and perceive a desired number, quality, and diversity of relationships that create a sense of belonging and being cared for, valued, and supported. Social connectedness is how we perceive the quality, the diversity, and the desired number of our relationships that create a sense of belonging, being cared for, being valued, and being supported. Around the time of the pandemic, the CDC really began researching isolation. Wonder why. Social isolation and loneliness have been linked to an increased risk for Heart disease by 29%, stroke by 32%, dementia by 50%, type 2 diabetes, depression, anxiety, addiction, self-harm and suicide, and an earlier death. Loneliness costs the United States economy an, an estimated $406 billion a year in addition to the $6.7 billion a year in Medicare costs for socially isolated older people. That is $413 billion that can be cured or treated by inviting people to small groups. It really is that simple. Further, the CDC says that characteristics of social connectedness are meaningful and regular social exchanges. Meaningful, meaning that we're talking about something that stimulates our mind, that stimulates our hearts, that gets our soul singing. Regular. In spirit groups, we do ask that we meet weekly. We do, because we need that connection for our own mental health, for our own physical health. A sense of support from friends, families, and others in the community. I have so many stories of support, which I'm going to share here in a little bit. A sense of belonging, having close bonds with others, feeling loved, cared for, valued, and appreciated by others, and having more than one person to turn to for support. A spirit group can be made with three people. That is two more than one. And those are people that we can turn to for support. People with these stronger social bonds have a 50% increased likelihood of survival than those with fewer social connections. And so if we reframe this in a way that is positive, we say that these social connections can help prevent Serious illness and outcomes like heart disease, stroke, dementia, depression, and anxiety. 
and there are no side effects. Notice, I did not have to read a single side effect like you do with a pill, right? It's literally coming together, inviting people into your space and saying, I love you unconditionally, and I support you. So social connection, connection with others, I'm almost done with the CDC, by the way, but I, science is interesting. Social connecting with others can help improve your ability to recover from stress, anxiety, and depression. It actually promotes healthy eating, physical activity, and weight. It improves sleep, well-being, and the quality of life, and it prevents chronic diseases. Social connection. So the five ways that the CDC suggests to improve that social connectedness, Unity Spirit Group solidly, firmly, completely answers three of them. Three of the five. Through our small group ministries, we help people answer, improve their social connection, such as we help them establish and maintain social connections by devoting time and attention to develop and maintain relationships. We have a check-in time. We get to know you. We ask you what your concerns are, what your celebrations are, what your prayer requests are. We spend time with you outside of the group doing community service activities, doing social things. We sit with you at church. We all go to church together and we sit together. We ask our groups to meet weekly because regular contact with others helps build connection. Joining a social group, being a part of a group with shared interests, with shared values and shared goals, can be rewarding and foster a sense of belonging. Many of our groups are based on common interests which I'm going to talk about here in a little bit because I have a favorite that I love to talk about. And they have the ability, people in these groups have the ability to reach out to sources of support to help them through tough times, even though it can be hard to ask for help. An integral part of the spirit group program is to have someone within the group that is responsible for prayer requests and letting the group know that someone needs assistance. There's a story of a woman in Texas that I've uh, heard from Mindy several times. And her house was flooded. And she belonged to a church. She'd belonged there for 30 years. And no one showed up. No one answered. No one, no one came. No one helped. She had to rebuild her entire life by herself. And she had mentioned a few times at church, yeah, my house got flooded. People would be like, oh, you poor dear. We're so sorry that happened. If she were, and she said to Mindy, if I were in a spirit group like I am now, they'd have showed up. They'd have notified the minister. They'd have showed up. The whole church would have been there. I'd have had a place, a safe place to stay. I'd have had food. I'd have had safety. But they didn't show up. Spirit groups also provide support to others, helping them make, helping them feel good and giving them that help, that much needed help. So there's this, if you've ever um, studied any Eastern philosophy um, and, and Eastern gurus, there's a guru by the name of Neem Karoli Baba. And Neem Karoli Baba is kind of famous for his link to like Ram Dass, if you've ever heard of Ram Dass, the, um, the famous American mystic. He just passed away a couple years ago. Krishna Das, he's one of those, uh, he's a famous Kirtan singer. Um, Sharon Salzberg, she's famous for meditation. Um, even Patch Adams has a connection. If you remember the, the Patch Adams movie um, that Robin William portrayed, he, they all have a connect and, connection to Neem Karoli Baba. They all had studied under him with the exception of Patch. So his students one day were all saying to him, you know, Baba G, how do we end suffering in the world? And he said, serve others. And he's like, no, no, no. What we mean is, how do we end our own suffering? And Babaji said, serve others. When we focus on building high quality, strong, meaningful social connections, we serve others. I'm reminded, and I mentioned this earlier, of so many stories of groups that actually came together and have been together for so long that they now attend each other's family birthday parties. They go to all of the funerals for each other. They go to weddings. In fact, 
one group was so close at a wedding that the nine people in their spirit group were on the front row as family. That is the kind of connection we're talking about. And the one other thing that social connectedness does is it helps us find ways to be responsive, supportive, and grateful to others. What is that saying? Um, I think Anne Lamott talks about it. If there's only one prayer in the world that you say, let it be thank you. It's that gratitude. It's that gratitude. Jose Andres is a visionary, a humanitarian, and a chef, and he's also an artist. In a time of great division in our country, I think the pandemic, <laughs> he is credited with saying, let's build longer tables, not higher walls. I love that statement because it reminds me of my mother and how her table always had room, always had room for extra chairs and extra people. So one of the things that I love about unity is how welcoming we are. I walked in today, people smiled at me, said hello, welcome, welcome. And I attribute this to the energy of our ministers and our LUTs. And for those of you that have never been to a convention or graduation and ordination, it is quite a sight to see. So convention kicks off on Monday with graduation and ordination of all of our new UWM ministers. And the room, this giant room that they all come into that's just outside of the, um, the chapel becomes this hubbub of, or this hub, hubbub, hub, of ministers and LUTs hugging and laughing and smiling and greeting each other. They are so welcoming and they are so loving because they're all doing their lives in their ministries. And then they get together with those people that they went to ministerial school with. They get together with people that they have aligned with on projects. And it's just this little buzzing, and sometimes it's really loud buzzing, of all of them welcome each other, hugs and smiles and hoops and hollers and everything abound. It, we can't even settle them down. We can't. I've tried. It's useless. We just begin graduation ordination. They eventually make their ways in. But they set that standard for the energy of welcome in our ministries. Based on what I can see at convention, I can only imagine how welcoming their ministries are. And that is an example of building bridges and longer tables and not higher walls. So when I look back on what the CDC recommends for our health, I see one word and one word only in all of it, and that is love. When Mindy Odlin created this program, she actually had called the five spiritual disciplines the five disciplines of love. Who knew that? Yay. I'll get you a lollipop later. <laughs> so let's talk about love. Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore writes of the power of divine love in, re in revealing word. He says that divine love, this is God's love, right? It's impersonal. It loves for the sake of loving. Kind of reminds me of my mom, you know? She loved for the sake of loving. It's an inner quality that sees good everywhere and in everybody. Love is the great harmonizer and healer. How many times my mother expressed love in the form of welcome at her table that my inbox gets inundated with people I haven't talked to since 1989 because she was, she was great at harmonizing and healing with love. And that is what we are being asked to do to open our hearts and our minds to those in the world who are lonely and to love them. The CDC says that love through connection heals and harmonizes. One of my favorite memes says, you will never look into the eyes of someone that God does not love. Think about that. Of all of the billions of people in the world, every single one of them, the power of God loves. Our biblical reminder of this comes from John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And one more Charles Fillmore quote, because I can never get enough of, of, of Mr. Fillmore. In to Keep a True Lent, he wrote... Love, in divine mind, is the idea of universal unity. 
and expression. It is the power that joins and binds together the universe and everything in it. Love is harmonizing constructive power. It is a harmonizing constructive power. When it is made active in your consciousness, it conserves substance and it restructures, rebuilds, and restores man in his world. So if we unpacked that, love in the mind of God, of which we are an active participant in every single day, is the idea of togetherness, of connection across the universe. As we express it, it joins and binds everything in the universe, including every human being, every animal, every country, every nation, every community, and everything within those entities. Love does not destroy, but rather it makes compatibility as it builds itself up. It only builds on itself. And when we continue to activate that and reactivate that in our minds and in our actions, it ha has the power to rebuild and restore every human being and the world that we live in. We just learned that the CDC has said that love can keep us alive longer. How many stories do we know of people who have debilitating diseases but when people get around them, they begin to feel better because they get that love and their cells begin to, to function effectively again. All of this in this power of coming together for 90 minutes a week. Imagine that. That we have that power to reconstruct, rebuild, and restore every person who joins us. And we have the power to do that to the world that we see before us by simply coming together every week and loving and supporting each other. I'm reminded of a story that Mindy Odlin tells. When she started her spirit groups, they had a, she had an open group, so anybody could come at any time, and this woman showed up, and she was in a tizzy. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I, my GPS wasn't working, and I got lost. Am I late? Am I late? Is this a problem? And, you know, she kind of made a scene, and people were getting really uncomfortable because everybody had already settled in, right? So Mindy said, oh, it's okay. It's okay. You're here now. Would you like something to drink? Here's some chocolate almonds. With that, you know, food makes everybody feel better. Let's get you some chocolate almonds. Get you something to drink and settle in. And within a few minutes, she settled down. The next week, same exact thing. She comes in all in a Oh, my gosh. Oh, the, the, the traffic and my day and my kids and my husband. And Minnie goes, you know, it's, I'm so glad that you are here. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get you something to drink. Would you like some chocolate-covered almonds? Let me get you some chocolate-covered almonds. She's like, oh, okay, thank you. Third week, she comes in. She's early, and she goes, look, I brought the almonds. <laughs> because she was loved and accepted exactly as she was. Her cup was filled. It cost Mindy nothing. It cost her nothing. A couple of almonds. Everybody's going to eat them anyway. And she finally was stable enough, strong enough to walk in and be able to say, I brought the almonds. She was so proud of herself. So as I said earlier, these weekly meetings need not look like a formal book club. In fact, as I said earlier, book clubs are less than 1% of the possibilities that we can create with these small group ministries. So we know that there are five disciplines of love. And before I talk to you about the endless possibilities, let's just revisit these real quickly. These disciplines, which that word triggers people. What do you mean I have to be disciplined? Well, let's call it a practice or an action or a method or an application or an exercise, whatever word you choose to apply there. Basically, we don't announce that we're moving into, this is our compassion time of, 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 our, of our spirit group. We're going to express compassion now for the next five minutes. We don't do that. We don't announce, oh, this is when we're moving into communion with God. It just becomes a natural part of our experience together Thus, it becomes a natural part of our lives. So we begin to express compassion, expressing that genuine love and care for another. Kind of like what Mindy did with the woman in the almonds. Expressing compassion is actually natural for most of us. But here's an interesting perspective. How many of us receive it with grace? How many of us feel that we're worthy of receiving that compassion willingly, openly, 
Well, spirit groups makes you do both. You give and you receive. Communion, taking time to connect with that power that created us. Communion does not have to look like the five-step unity prayer process. In fact, does anybody in here know how to pray the five-step? Thank you. Okay. There's a few of us. can be a little complicated. I worked for Silent Unity for two and a half years. It still can be complicated. We don't have to do that. Prayer looks like many things. It looks like silence. It looks like a beautiful song. Love can build a bridge. It looks like meditation. It looks like writing in a journal. It's connection to God. So whatever makes you feel connected to God, for me, it's smelling roses, right? Bring a rose for everybody. Pass it around. Let them smell it. Let them feel what that experience is like. That's communion. It doesn't have to be prayer. can be, but it doesn't have to be. Community, going beyond our church walls. Whoa. Talk about resistance sometimes when I talk about that. Going beyond our church walls and actively participating in the community in which we live. I have a somebody on my advisory team that reminds me consistently when we get hit with resistance that it is a sign of spiritual and emotional maturity to give to others without expecting anything in return. And why wouldn't we want to leave our community better than when we joined it? And then challenge, setting intentions for our own spiritual growth. I don't know about you, but even as a minister, I still see areas where I need to grow, always spiritually. Whether it is willingly receiving compassion, which I don't do very well, or finding time each day to sit in the silence, or as Charles Fillmore called it, going to headquarters. Whatever it is, actively setting an intention to do it creates the energy for the universe to support you in it. And of course, connection. So my favorite example is a knitting group, and I'll cut this short. So a group of people who know how to knit and who want to know how to knit get together. And prior to them meeting, somebody decided, we're going to knit caps for people who are in the oncology unit because they have cancer and they're getting chemotherapy and they're losing their hair and we're coming into winter. So everybody has the patterns, they all have their, their yarn, and they come together every week for 90 minutes. And in that time frame, somebody reads the daily word, somebody, um, somebody leads everybody in their check-in, maybe somebody leads a prayer, maybe somebody plays a song, and then as they're knitting, they begin to discuss the daily word. What does it mean to them? How does it apply to their life? How does it affect them? And they do this every week for six weeks. Discuss the daily word. Maybe they have an article from Science of Mind magazine or Unity magazine that they decide they want to discuss. But the whole time they're knitting caps. And during the seventh week, they, or it's actually the eighth week, they show up together at the oncology unit they take a few selfies. They ask somebody to take some group pictures of them. They donate the caps. They wear their Unity of Columbia t-shirts. Maybe it even says spirit groups on it. And the people say, you're from Unity of Columbia. They're like, yeah, we're just here to give you these caps. We just wanted, wanted to do this for the people here. I've been looking for a spiritual home. Can I come visit you? Absolutely. What are you interested in? We have a spirit group. Let's start there. Come see us on Sunday. Our, our services start at 10, but make sure you ask for me. Find Indira so I can come up and welcome you and greet you because I, you know, I'm kind of busy in the church, but I want to make sure that I see you there. Boom. Now you have a new member. Maybe you have their family and you have their friends. You just built a bridge and you built your community and you might have saved a life or two. During week nine, they all get together. They have coffee and tea at a local tea room. And they discover that there's somebody in the community, not in their community, but in the community outside the walls, who has a very rare disorder. They get cold very easily. What do you say we knit them a blanket? We all have these patterns. We pick out the colors. And we all knit, and we'll bring it together, and we'll, we'll make it for them. Absolutely, let's do it. So after they're done at their tea room, they all go to the yarn shop, buy all the yarn they need, Week 10, they come together as the church, 
all the spirit groups get together. They have a celebration. Maybe they have a Sunday bar after church on Sunday. Everybody gets some ice cream Sundays. They talk about what their spirit groups did. They talk about how they were moved, how they've grown. Week one, they start again. And now the knitting group is making a blanket. And they repeat this and repeat this every week. And if you know knitters, they're not going to miss a week. Anybody in here know that for a fact? I do. So that can be for any type of group. So as we reignite the power of spirit groups here at Unity of Columbia, I invite you to think about those people who you know who may be lacking connection. I want you to think about your interests and know that somebody else here has those interests. Make a note to connect with those people that you think may be expressing feelings of loneliness. Tell them that you're getting ready to start a spirit group. You want them to join you. And maybe they have some ideas. Because in the end, all of this is about love. When we build those bridges between us and others, when we build longer tables and invite people to sit with us, we create those lifelong connections just like my mother did. And we have that power within us, and we have that power with spirit groups. And these connections are not frivolous. According to the CDC, they actually change lives. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Indira. Sing with me. Let our hearts not be hardened to those living in the margins. There is room at the table for everyone. This is where it all begins. This is how we gather in. There is room at the table for everyone. Go ahead and stand up and sing with me. Too long we have wandered, burdened and done. There is room at the table. Everyone, let us see this new world in. This is how it all begins. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all, and no gift is too small. There is room at the table for everyone. There's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, there is room at the table for everyone. Here and now we can be the loved community. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all, and no gift is too small. There is room at the table for everyone. There's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all, and no gift is too small. There is room at the table for everyone. There's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. Yes, there is. I think you may be seated. This is the time in our service when we put ourselves into the law of circulation, knowing that in order to receive, we must give. This morning, you are invited to support your spiritual community in consciousness. I now ask that you take your offering in your hand, whether you give electronically by check or cash, and say these words together. 
Divine love, one with me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am joy-filled and grateful. Oh, you guys, I don't have my music up. I'm going to have to improvise because I don't have that music pulled up. I forgot about the offertory. How do you like that? I think it's supposed to be Stand by Karen Drucker, but I don't have that one memorized. So I'm going to ask you all to sing with me one that we know, which I think is very appropriate anyway. So maybe this is spirit working through me. Thank you for this day, spirit. Let's just give some gratitude as we give our offertory. Thank you for this day, spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Turn to your neighbor and say, thank you for this day. Sing with me. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. And thank you for improvising with me. Thank you, Audra. That song's always great. <laughs> All right. We have two symbols of blessing today making their way up the aisle. First is the love offering given this morning. We bless these gifts and are grateful for this opportunity to make a difference in the lives of our spiritual family and world. Second is our prayer box. In prayer, we expand our awareness that we are expressions of God. And we receive an abundance of all that we need to fulfill our soul's purpose. Now let us take time to hold one another in grace and light and share the names of loved ones you would like to hold in prayer. Please speak your loved one's name aloud so that we can collectively hold space. For all of the names on our heart, know that you are heard and seen in the collective God mind. Filled with that abundance, please rise and sing with us our prayer of protection. And you know what, Julie? I'm an E flat. God is here. The light of God surrounds us. Our God protects us, presence of God watches over us, wherever we are, God is. As you move into your week, I invite you to show up in the world as you were wonderfully and beautifully made in joy and pure love. Wherever you are, God is. Thank you. 